that man again. It's that man again. It's that man again. It's that call me handy. It's him. Perpetrating preposterously polysyllabic paradoxes with Gianis the gallivanting at gargantuan gatherings, frantically feathering his phallic finances, he still remains. Oh, the pride and joy in his hand is boy, how it's useless to complain. When troubles through him, it is no, he's a man, a man again. He's boss about, lad. Sure he is. You got an appointment? Nee, but I've got band. He's got one. Ain't you ever heard of Charlie Shadwell? That's a band. It's the boss's favorite. He's got no ear for music. Talk about bands. Uh, well, mister, he's got no time to listen to bands today. He'll listen to mine, lad. Hey, you can hear it five miles away. The brass is beautiful. Talk about bands. Oh, the boss ain't getting up today. I'd better take him up his breakfast. Now, where's the aspirin? Spring is coming. Spring is coming. The spring's gone. Hello, Sam. How are you? All right. But, but, boss, I thought you were going to have breakfast in bed. Not after yesterday, Sam. Why not, boss? Well, somebody soaked my knife and the fried egg slipped off and shot down the bed like a frightened flounder. <laughs> well, now I must get busy to open my circus today. You can't, boss. The guy's taking away the marquee. The marquee? But what about Mr. What's-his name? You know, the poet. Is he still up the pole? The boys stood on the burning ship. Lummy Sammy's still there. <laughs> He's been up there a week. Tell him they've taken the pole away. Okay, boss. Hey, you. They've taken the pole away. Ah, <laughs> oh, there he is. Well, how do you feel after being up the... Uh, 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 does it hurt? No, oh, shocking. It's shocking. I feel... Uh, I feel... Good morning. That's right. <laughs> I... I forgot to tell you, boss. What? Poppy Poopa sent you these flowers. Oh, isn't that nice? A bouquet of Middleton's whips. What's that, boss? Gasparinum fagandum. Or flowering shag, eh? What lovely poses. Poses? Smile, please. Watch the bad air. Thank you. <laughs> tell me, uh, which of those was the real bird? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> you know, these flowers have given me an idea, Sam. Oh, I wish you'd get stop getting ideas, boss. But this is a wow. We'll hold a fate. All we want is a garden and a wet day. Now, Sam, get 200 teapots, an ounce of coffee, and a lump of sugar on a string. But where will we get the garden, boss? I'll get a packet of seeds, grow turnips and swedes. Where will you get them? From an old man in Leeds. <laughs> now, Aunt Sally can organize the produce, and I look after the baby. I'll tell you what, we put on a pram parade and call it These You Have Shoved. <laughs> How's that? Well, for overall... Well, it's very nice of Poppy Poopa to send me these flowers. I better not sniff them, though. She may put a mousetrap inside. Oh, oh, so I traced you at last, it, Ma. Curse the hole in my pocket. I bet you follow the trail of toffee apple sticks. Well, you won't see much more of me for a while. I'm going on a long journey. Oh, I am sorry. You better hurry up or you'll miss the train. Taxi! Where are you going? I'm going to see my relations in Australia. Australia? She's playing my game. <clears throat> I didn't know you had up the relations there. Oh, yes. I've got an uncle, Willie, in Woolloomooloo. Not Willie McHugh from Woolloomooloo. Oh, it must have been in 92 when Willie McHugh left Waterloo for Woolloomooloo. <laughs> By the way, didn't he uh, marry Polly Potter, whose painter was known as the Mad Hatter of Parramatta? <laughs> you don't know any of them. Don't know Willie McHugh of Woolloomooloo? Why, I met him when he was riding a Gigi to Fiji from Murrumbiji. <laughs> I suppose you'll say next that you know my aunt, Mrs. Wellaby. Not Penelope Wellaby, the Belle of Canelaby. <laughs> well, well, what a wonderful woman. Do you know I've seen Mrs. Wellaby get all over Wallaby by the back of its neck a bit? <laughs> One night the other afternoon... This is going too far. Well, it's a long way to Australia. <laughs> You've never been there. Me? You know Sydney Harbour. Do I know Sydney Harbour? Why, Sid and I toured New Zealand with a concert. <laughs> oh, dear. Yeah. I remember we had a double act called the Prickly Pear. And one of them was trying to put his tights on with a cactus, when all of a sudden... Now, listen, Squire. Yes? Can't we ever come to an understanding? Yes. Today, I'll place my fate in your hands. I'll be waiting. I'll be missing. I wish you wouldn't talk so much. Now, if Auntie wasn't so keen to get me married, I'd be all right. If some side shows you should plan, lo and behold, I'm your man. <laughs> well, if you've got stalls and coconut chives, I can do with you to coin a fries. <laughs> I've got the lot, sir. Oh. 
What you gain on the swings, you lose, pardon my French, on the roundabout. Well, if I lose anything, I shall be in the, uh, pardon my Irish, stew. Can you let me have a complete fare on hire? No, oh, bless you, sir. You can hire anything from an early gurdy to, lo and behold, oopla. Oh. Well, uh, we shall have to hire some food or we shall all be, pardon my Austria, hungry. <laughs> Oh, yes. Stewart. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know I could laugh. Yes, rather. Well, <laughs> you are, Mr. H, to coin a phrase, a top. And you'd better, to call a cab, be off. <laughs> oh, well, that's all settled. Now, I'll put Mrs. Mop in charge of the kitchen. She's the only one who can make a prefabricated cottage pie. As usual, I'll look after the cash. Now, where's Charlie Shadwell? Meow. Oh, come in. Come in. Meow. Now, don't talk to me with a kitten in your mouth. Oh, it isn't a kitten, it's Charlie. Let me go, you bully. Ow. Now, now, go on, Crookshank, drop him. Okay. There you are. Now, Charles, let that be a lesson to you, not to pinch the cat's milk for your grandchild. <laughs> now, uh, off you go, Crookshank. Shut up and yow. Lovely cat. Now, what have you got for us today? Well, it's an arrangement by Roy Douglas of Il Bastio. How does it go? Brightly dawns upon me, dawns upon me. Stop! It's just dawned on me, too. <laughs> what has? The Charles Shadwell is a very, very bony man. <laughs> well, have a bash at Il Bashio, Charles. <laughs>
the boys together and get along to the fair. Oh, dear. Hello. I want you to take an order. Certainly, madam. Just wait till I get a pie of pepper. A pussy poop. My cuff will do. <laughs> yes, madam? Four dozen bananas. Oh, yes. What size, madam? Slender gents? <laughs> yes. A dozen eggs. Pigeon partridge or puffin. What? Yes. And an eight-day clock. Yes. Alabaster. I beg your pardon? Oh, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. And uh, send them around right away. Certainly, madam. What am I talking about? I haven't got a shop. Now, where's Mrs. Mott? Can I do you now, sir? Well. <laughs> Why, Mrs. Mott, you've got your knees tucked under your chin. Have you been riding in a jeep? <laughs> no, sir, I've been spring cleaning. Oh. You wouldn't believe what I saw, sir. Why, when I turned up the carpet, I found Quite, 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 quite. And when I looked in that top drawer of yours, what do you think was in it? It's a lie. Now, listen. <laughs> you've, uh, you've heard about my fate, Mrs. M. Oh, yes, sir. It's the talk of all the ladies in the local. <laughs> I suppose they think I'm going to lead them up the garden, eh? Well, they won't be disappointed. Now, can you recommend a good fortune teller? What about me, sir? Everyone says I'm physic. <laughs> really? Well, don't get bottled or they shake you three times a day. Can you read hands? Oh, I'd rather hold them, sir. I bet you would. Well, see what you can do with mine, and don't tell me there's a lot of money coming to me because I'm still with the BBC. <laughs> no, sir. Oh, oh, what, what a heart lies. Really? You're going to marry very soon. A widow, sir. Oh, is she a little older than me? Not much, sir. Well, tell me, is she rather Spanish-looking with a bucket on her arm? <laughs> yes, sir. And tell me, does she say, can I do you now, sir? Yes, sir. Well, that's very clever of you, Mrs. Mop. Now, read it with my glove off. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, sir. Well, anyway, I'll put you in the tent and I'll call you now. Uh, what can I call you? I've often been called an old witch, sir. Quite, quite, yes, I know. <laughs> but if you can read teacups, I'll call you Gypsy Rosie Lee. Oh, thank you, you sir. You like that? I've, I've brought this for you, sir. Oh, isn't that nice? What is it? I call it the Gypsy's Warning. <laughs> Looks more like a mule's foot dipped in jam. <laughs> TGFN. Look you, B U W N Y. <laughs> What's that, sir? A Welsh rabbit. Now, go on, get on. <laughs> well, uh, get on. She'll make, she'll make a lovely palmist. I must get the boys to give her a big hand. Hey, boss. Yes? Yeah? Boss, something wonderful's happened. I know. Yeah. The Spaniards are keeping the German wolf round the door. <laughs> no. What? No, boss. There's a man outside with a concatenation of curious contrivances containing caravans, freely comparison with curly cornucopias, and continuous caterwauling on curricated coleopsis. Now, Sam, listen. Do it at dictation speed while I go to the barbers and have a shave, will you? <laughs> okay, boss. There's a man outside. There's a man outside. Good morning. Uh, good morning, sir. Shave. Yes, please, and not too much up the nose. Yeah. Lovely day, sir. Oh, splendid, splendid. Oh, dear, not so much in the mouth. No, sir. Uh, lots of BBC gentlemen coming here, sir. Well, I hope you get your money before you start. Yeah, sir. You know, we had Mr. Arthur Sanford in earlier today, sir. Well, what did he have? A shave and a polish? Oh, there you are, sir. Good morning. Good morning. Charlie, Cibro, and Alfred. Are you Over. still at it, Sam? <laughs> yeah, but yeah, yeah, boss. Are you trying to tell me something? Yeah, boss. Well, what is it? There's a man outside. Well, send him in. <laughs> sure, boss. Come here, huh? <laughs> ah, what's yeah. your cock? Eh? I said, what's your cock? <laughs> Here's that society entertainer again. Well, I've got the old roundabout. Well, bring it in and let her sit on the sofa. <laughs> no, I can't. I mean, the wooden horses. I carved them myself. Yeah, I bet you chiseled the first three. <laughs> I suppose all sorts of famous people have ridden on your good wood horses, chum. Sure thing, Cock. Steve Donoghue, Lady Astor, Ernie Bevan and Mr Gladstone. Oh, all the well-known jockeys. Shrot, Cock. <laughs> I suppose you've got a steam organ to play music while you whiz. Yes, Cock. Well, you know the little man who stands in the middle, gets wound up and hits the chimes with a hammer? Sure, mate. Well, tell him I'll go 50-50 with the plug money. <laughs> We're opening in an hour. OK. Doodle-doo, cock. A doodle-doo. 
You know, I seem to have everything now. And remember, Sam, whatever you do, act with dignity. Sure, boss. To be or not to be, that is the question. What are you playing at, Sam? Uh, I'm acting with dignity, boss. Get out of here. <laughs> okay, boss. You know, Sam's good. Real good. In fact, ill good. <laughs> now, uh, well, now I must get ready to... Uh, to be back in... Don't have a chance, little nut. I wonder who she is. It's very funny, that I like that. Ah, oh, Mr. Upla. Yes? Why do you not send for me? I would make your garden potty. <laughs> well, what, what can you do? Turn somersaults on the crazy baby? No, I will make an exhibition of myself dancing. You certainly will with those shorts on. <laughs> look at your legs. What is the matter with them? Well, they look like a couple of sticks of moss-covered celery. Also, also, I'm a belly dancer. <laughs> belly dancer? Oh, I, I suppose you put jelly down your jumper, stand still and cough. No, no. You should see me dance the plonker. <laughs> plonker, you palooka, it's polka. And then I appear and do the wilts. The wilts? Followed, I suppose, by the beds, bucks and lanks. And I finish with the scotch itch. <laughs> I'll see. Dancing with thorns in your kilt. <laughs> All right, so-so, get a cap and a scarf and a dagger, and you can dance at our pache. <laughs> Poor so-so. Once when he was doing his electric pan dance, he got his shirt caught and finished up with the dance of the severed tails. <laughs> well, now I must get ready to... Don't have a chance. Hey, no, you, no. you. Hello, honey. Well, what a nice girl. Didn't I meet you at the casino, Hick Bibby? I don't remember. Surely you remember. You were sitting next to Norman Blood, the butcher. No, really, I don't. Oh, you can't have forgotten. Don't you remember? You threw the pig's head over your shoulder and hit Bonnie Prince Chas in the clock. <laughs> well, who are you, anyway? Maria Perilli. I want an audition. Well, I'll give you that later, but you've got to sing first. Now, what's it to be? <laughs> <laughs> My heart is as light as a feather. Oh, well, really? Isn't that nice? Chas, have you got the music? Yes, Tommy. Have you got an orchestra? Oh, yes, Tommy. Have you got a wife and four children? Yes, Tommy. Tommy, the man's got everything. <laughs> well, sing it, dear. Down a green lane I was walking T'was early one morning in spring I saw a fair maid in a meadow And sweetly I heard her sing My heart is as light as a feather I hope it will never be sad For I'm to be married tomorrow But not to a apprentice lad The lad that I wed is a sailor, he sails on the deep blue sea. He's handsome, he's young, and he's clever, and he's the lad for me. My heart is as light as a feather, I hope it will never be sad, for I'm to be married tomorrow, but not to a apprentice lad. My dress will be white as a daisy, and bright shines my gold wedding ring. Three pretty fair maids shall attend me, and sweetly the bell shall ring. And sweetly the bell shall ring. My heart, my heart, my heart is as light as a feather. Come, will you dance at my wedding, my bonny bright ribbons to wear? I'll smile in the eyes of my true love, goodbye, I will say to care. Say, <laughs> 
What a lovely voice. I must give her an audition as soon as possible. <laughs> oh, hello, Auntie Sally. All ready for action, eh? Well, I don't think your cricket boots go well with that horsey sunbonnet you've got on. I've collected the most wonderful fruits and vegetables. Oh. Everybody seems to have sent you raspberries. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely big ones. I see, full blown. Yeah. Farmer Fungus cut some rhubarb for me. Yeah, I bet he cut some capers too. The bald headed old barn owl. <laughs> the rhubarb isn't fully grown, is it? Oh, yes. Yes, he forced it in his linen cupboard. <laughs> I can't stand rhubarb that buttons up the back. But this year, he's got a perfectly wizard pumpkin. A wizard pumpkin, eh? Did he wave his wand and turn it into a taxi? I have the most delicious homemade wine. Oh. I had one little pot and I felt absolutely toddly. Oh, what did you do? Swing on your daddy's moustache and kick your slipper through the fanlight? <laughs> Next morning, I had an awful pushover. A pushover, eh? Well, I suppose that tot, when you went for a tatar, made you totter, eh? Well, have you arranged for anyone to open the fate? Oh, yes, Sir Pontifract Poopa. Now, don't tell me that Pontifract Poopa is Poppy's pater. Yes, and do you know, he wants you to go down for the shooting. No fear. He's a proper pants pepperer, is Poppy Poopa's pater. <laughs> well, now I must totter along, Tommy. Totter for now? <laughs> well, I hope I'm going to make some money at this fate. I know what I'll do. I'll buy a packet of safety pins and hold a baby show. Excuse, please, mister. Oh, dear. <laughs> you buy a nice go-kart from Humphrey Bogart? <laughs> What's that, a tough baby carriage with bulletproof cushions? No, no, I've nothing to put in it. Oh, but mister, I get you a very nice baby, boy maybe. Well, I'd rather a cute baby, girl, surely. Is it yours? Oh, no, mister. My sister. No. <laughs> what, the girl with the yash Macintosh? Oh, yes, yes, yes. You must keep babies very quiet, mister. I tell you, sugar dummy, all oh, lummy. <laughs> now, I've got a better idea than that. Get Mrs. Moff to sing Christopher Stone is tumbling downstairs. <laughs> now, go on, clear out. All right, miss, all right. I go, I come back. You know, he's suffering from sticky... <laughs> he's suffering from sticky insteps. Every time he walks, the carpet comes up with him. Well, here you are, lad. Oh, Band's yeah. arrived. But I've got a band. Hey, <laughs> not like this one. Law boys, talk about bands. <laughs> terrible, terrible. They don't know their brass from their oboes. Do me. Who, uh, who are they? Yes, boss. The, the people are waiting for the open the fate. All right, I'll go over right away, Sam. Come on, let's go now. Uh, begging yours, can you direct me to the ankle competition? Well, showing yours, you need no direction. Oh, do you like them? I've never seen anything so shapely since Tessie O'Shea's tripped over a steamroller. <laughs> Say, would you care for a stroll in the woods? I know a lovely rocking bush. Oh, come on, boss, they're waiting for you. Uh, Yours, I'm talking to the gentleman. That's right. Now go away, Sam. We're just going to see that nobody picks the blue bell. Oh, come on, boss. Oh, Sam, you are a tease. Begging yours. Don't forget my ankles. I'll be there on my knees. Doing what? Begging yours. <laughs> well, now I must find somebody to open this fate. Mrs. Feather would have come, but she's been tossed about by the wind and I can't find her. Ah, there's the very... Hey, you! You over there, come here. No, 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 who, 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 me? Yes. Whoa, who do you take? Uh, take me for a... Uh... Better or worse? No, no, no. Look... I want you to open uh, a bottle. No, 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 no. Make a speech and open this. Uh, that. Uh, how do you do? No, no, no fear. No, no. I never made what you make call it in. in, in, in uh, 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 what's his name? Well, you've only got to stand up there and say, uh, say. Uh, oh yes, yes, I can say that all right. Yes, yes rather. I, I just make a few uh, re, re. Uh, Read my letter of the fourteenth inch. Take this down, will you, Miss Jones? I yes. just. Well, what on earth are you? Uh, 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 I mean... Yes, yes. Right, right, right. Now, go on, and I'll introduce you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we, it's all in favour, say aye. Now, uh, carried you nanny, you nanny. <laughs> that's right, that's right, yes. Now, silence, please, everybody. I beg to introduce to you, Mr... Uh, well, you know him, uh, who is going to... Oh, go on, you. Go on. Oh, uh, yes. Uh, uh, ladies and... Uh, uh, I've stood in this... Uh, Market place. No, 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 just... Uh, I stood in the, on this... Uh, Burning jet? Well, oh, but she had... But no, no, no. I stood in up. Oh. Yes. 
And now, now, I, 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 uh, I, and now I declare, yes, that's it, that's right, that's it, yes, I declare this, uh, open, are they, yes. well, let's go and have a right. right here. But, boss, yes, boss, what about the baby show? All right, Sam, the baby show, well, hand me the powder puff, the scales, and my trousers with a lap in them. Ah, oh, ladies, there you are, ladies. Now, now for the rules for this baby contest. Now, first, no child over 90 allowed to compete. Bearded babies barred and don't knock your pipe out on the nipper's nappers. <laughs> Secondly, no parent to enter more than one baby for this contest. But, Mr. Child, we, yes. I have brought all my bambinos. See? Lovey, you've got enough for a choir. Can they sing? Can they sing? Why, they sing lock likes. Shit. <laughs> Sing Lark Lights. Well, I've never heard it, anyway. Well, let's hear them. One, two. Twinkle, a twinkle, a little star. How I wonder what you are. Up above the world so high. Magnifico! Do they not vulcanize beautifully? Oh, yes, especially the one in the Savage Club bib. <laughs> Now, that's the one you can enter, so-so. But how do I enter him, Mr. Kidley? Well, fill in his form with rusks. Write your own name clearly on the top and the baby's name on the bottom. Now, next. Ah, here. Here's a lovely baby. High heel shoes and a fully fashioned pinny. Hello, my little chick of biddy. A big in yours. Oh, it's you, is it? Well, get out of that pram and don't forget to replace the crumbs. The idea. Now, next baby, please. Oh, here's a nice little chap with a bucket on his head. There, now. Oh, oh. Now then, didn't I tell you not to open your mouth, Egbert? And don't bite the gentleman's thumb. That's all right. Well, Mrs. Mop, I didn't know you had a baby. I'm only having it for this afternoon, sir. Oh. <laughs> His mother's gone to the BBC. Oh, I suppose she's having two pennies on the Mediterranean merry-go-round, eh? <laughs> anyway, I think this is a very fine baby. Now, put him on the scales. <laughs> Well, what a heavy baby. He's a fraud. Look what he has in his hand. Oh, it's only an anvil. <laughs> no, I insist that you put my bambino on the wooing machine. On the wooing machine, all right. There you are now. Now give him the anvil, Egbert. <laughs> Egbert's won! Bless his little... Quite, 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 quite. I protest against the decision. I will write to my silly sisters. You're the silly sisters? No, no, no. Now, quiet, please, quiet, please. So, so, I'm surprised at this ridiculous behavior. Mrs. Mops Egbert has won hands down on Bumpsy Daisy. Now, what do you say, Egbert? Okay, by me. That's fine. And now, little Bambino Galvani. You are, I'm sure. You're not going to take your defeat like a little sportsman, I hope, are you? Or aren't you? What your mummy, 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 You have been listening to Tommy Handley and Itmar with Horace Percival, Sidney Keith, Dorothy Summers, Dino Galvani, Fred Yule, Bill Stevens, Jean Capra, and Diana Morrison. The singer, Maria Pirelli. The BBC Variety Orchestra, conducted by Charles Shadwell. Script by Ted Kavanagh. Produced by Francis Wesley. <laughs>